Welcome to Kids Church. Um, we are excited. We've got a great story for you guys today that the kiddos are going to tell Take you about. It over. They, they have taken over Kids Church this morning. Yes. They have made the video today. Um, if you guys remember, last week we continued talking about the beginning of the church. Do you remember what the story was last week? We made brownies. Right, it was Saul to Paul. Saul to Paul, that's right. So Saul was persecuting the church. He did not want the church to grow. He didn't want people to know about Jesus. He was a bad brownie. He was a bad brownie. And then Jesus met him on the road. And changed him to a good brownie. Changed his heart. And then Saul went everywhere telling everybody all about the good news of who Jesus was. So today we're going to learn about another um, early apostle in the church that was sharing the good news. It's called Peter. Named Peter. So we're going to go ahead and let the kiddos take over. Are take you, it away. Are you ready to run? <laughs> One, two, three. Peter finally caught you and asked you to give. Hmm. No, 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 no. We caught Peter. Poor Peter. King Herod had Peter arrested and put in chains with many soldiers guarding him. No one will get Peter with so many guards, said King Herod. Peter's friends gathered at Mary's house and prayed for Peter. Peter was sleeping between two guards when suddenly he was surrounded by a bright light. An angel tapped Peter on the shoulder, waking him up. Clink, clink, went Peter's chains as he raised his arms to cover his eyes from the light. Get up! Put on your sandals and cloak and follow me, the angel told Peter. Clink! The chains fell off of Peter's wrists. He put on his sandals and cloak and followed the angel out of the prison, passing all the guards who were fast asleep. Am I dreaming, thought Peter. Once Peter was safely away from the prison, the angel left him. Peter walked to the door of Mary's house. Knock, knock, knock. Please let me in, Peter said. His friend Rhoda came to answer the door. I know that voice, she thought. Rhoda was so happy, she forgot to open the door. Instead, she ran back to tell the others who was there. Peter is at the door, she exclaimed. Peter can't be at the door. He's in prison, they replied. You must be very tired, and you're hearing things. Peter was still outside the house. He tried again. Knock, knock, knock. Rhoda ran back to open the door. Everyone was amazed. Peter told what happened to him and asked them to tell everyone else the good news. In the morning, no one at the prison knew what had happened to Peter. The guards were in big trouble. All right. One of the things I love so much about this story. Well, there's two things I love about this story. One, Peter was very brave and very bold to share the good news about Christ 
even though there were people that were throwing him in jail. Mm -hmm. He was bold and he was, yeah, (laughs) even though this guy was throwing him in jail. He was bold and brave to share the good news about Christ. The second thing that I love about this story is that when the followers of Jesus were worried about their friend Peter and worried for themselves, what did they do? They prayed. They prayed. I think that's a great thing that we can take from this is that when we're scared, when we're worried, when we're sad, even when we're happy and things are going great, we should turn to God and we should practice praying to him. So we're going to do a um, a craft, craft. a little activity to help teach us a little bit more about prayer. Now, you guys have done this in kids church before. It's been a while here. You can keep this on the air side so we can see it. Okay. So let's get a marker. And we're, we're tracing our hand and doing the five finger prayer. Okay. All right, so each finger is going to be a different part of our prayer. All right. We've got our our hands. Mine looks Bet. not as good as yours. <laughs> All right. So when you've got your hands and you're praying, we're going to start with the finger that's closest to us, which is our thumb. thumb. Do you remember what the thumb is for? The thumb is for, like, close family members and friends. That's right. So the finger closest to you reminds you to pray for the people who are closest to you. So family and friends. Okay, now, which comes next, the pointer finger? What does the pointer finger remind us of? Do you remember? People who point to you in the right direction. So that could be teachers, that could be parents, that could be um, pastors, people who, who teach you and point you the way that you need to go. People who help you go do good? People who help you, yeah. So like teachers and pastors would be good, or who anyone who helps you, points you in the right direction. Okay, ready for the next one? Yeah. Your middle finger is the tallest finger on your hand. So what does that remind us? The tallest finger, do you remember? No. The tallest finger, so it, it reminds us to pray for the people who are at the top. So the people who are at the top are the people who are authority, leading authority figures. That's right, so like the president, um, you know, senators who make the laws, the mayor of your city, people who are in a position of authority that are, are making decisions. All right. Do you remember what the next one is for, Camden? The weak people. The weak people. So the next finger is your ring finger. And your ring finger is the weakest finger on your hand. So that helps us to pray for people who might be sick, people who might need something, um, those that are that are maybe in a in a position where they need someone to, to pray for for help for them. Okay, and then the last finger is which one? Yourself. Yourself. That's right. So your pinky finger. It's your last finger, and we're supposed to remember to put others before ourselves, and we come last. So then your last finger will be to pray for yourself, the things that that you need to ask God for. Um, all right, so there we have it. There's our reminder for our hand prayer. And uh, so what I would love for you guys to do is to also maybe draw around this, draw or write maybe specific people that come to mind for that prayer. Um, and then hang this. Oh, go ahead. You could split into sections, like between the fingers. So you have more room? Yeah, so yeah. you have things for different thoughts. Like what I'm gonna do right here, it's like I'm gonna split this into idea. sections, and you can write people that that would need that prayer. Yeah, and then you can hang this on your wall or somewhere, um, so that you can look at this this week and be reminded to pray for lots of different people in your life. Because a lot of times, when we sit down to pray, sometimes the only things I think of to pray for are things that are in my life, that self one is not too hard to remember, right? Or maybe I remember to pray for just thanking God for our food because we tend to pray at mealtimes. 
but it's good for us to, to pray for lots of other things. So I want to challenge you guys this week to continue to find ways to share the good news about Jesus. And also I want you guys to, to be challenged to practice praying for people and to pray with boldness the way that his followers did when the church was just getting started. All right, Camden, would you like to close us in prayer today? Yes. All right, let's pray. Jesus, someone told us about you, and someone else told them once too. You inspired people in every time and space to keep the word spreading all over the place. Thank you for those who are show, who show and tell us all of your love. Give us the courage and guts to work for heaven above. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. We hope to see you on Friday at our Zoom hangout, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.